IGCSE Computer Science. And this is the final statement from Topic 4, or 1.4, or uh, you just call it 4 because this is Topic 4 of Theory. Um, describe how knowledge of security can be applied um, to real-life scenarios. So it's really important for um, security to be applied to online banking and shopping. Now this is for obvious reasons, because online banking, like hackers can hack your um, credit card numbers if they can intercept it being transmitted. So it's important for security to be applied here. And also shopping, because again, credit cards and stuff like that. So along with encryption, security protocols, and other security methods that we've looked at um, in the previous videos, these websites may carry out other procedures for um, extra security. So that's pretty much what we're going to look at. So a bank may use a 10 or 12 digit code um, unique to every customer. So each customer gets this code. The customer will be asked to enter it. So that's one, um, one thing that they could do. So for example, I've created this um, thing called the Liam and Scott Bank. That's um, me and that's Scott. And uh, we have a bank. Um, and we ask our customers to um, input their 12-digit codes. The first thing that they do um, when they access our site, when they want to log in to their account. So we ask them to um, enter their 12-digit um, code. A bank may also ask a user to input um, the numbers from their four-digit PIN um, and, or, or other characters from their password. Um, now, now we know that most, like, when we go to ATMs, we input our PIN. Uh, well, actually, I don't do that because I don't have a credit card, but um, most people do that. But what bank, like, online banks can actually do is ask you for specific numbers from the PIN. For example, um, enter digit 2 from your PIN, enter digit 4, enter digit 3. So it's, it's like that. So, um, so we, like, Scott and I, we ask our customers to input um, some characters from their PIN, and um, the, like the character that they have to enter is randomized to increase security. Some systems may also use a handheld device in which the user inserts their credit card. We usually see these in restaurants. Um, so, like when you, or yeah, yeah, restaurants. So, like when you're um, paying for your food and you want to pay with credit card, um, the waiter or waitress comes in with a uh, one of those um, machines. You put your credit card in. Uh, PIN is input. So they, um, they enter their PIN, and the device will then generate a code which the user must type in on the website. The code is generated from an internal clock and um, the PIN. The, bank servers, the bank's server and the time are, all, um, are synchronized with the handheld device, and uh, of course the bank's server also stores the PIN. So the bank's server will know if the code is entered correctly on the website. So yeah, it's quite a cool thing. They, um, banks may also ask the user to enter parts of their passwords using drop-down boxes. And this is to help prevent spyware software. Because um, this forces a mouse to be used, um, so the use of the keyboard is eliminated. Because spyware software, like key loggers, um, they sense keys um, input from the keyboard. If you use a mouse, you know, that's avoided. And um, just um, one more thing, back to that um, pin slash character thing, enter the digits from the pin, that also helps avoid spyware software. Because um, if you input your pin, like if your pin is 1234, and you um, input 1234, spyware software is going to see under log 1234 pressed by the user. But if it's uh, random characters from the pin, then um, it could be like 2143, or, um, or if it's three characters, then two, one, three, then, you know, the, the, the keylogger is going to see two, one, three, and that's going to be like, um, okay, let's try that. No, no, it didn't work. It's clearly something's going on. So, security. So, um, Scott and I ask our um, customers to enter their, the characters from their um, password using drop-down boxes so that they don't have to use the keyboard so that um, spyware software can get the key presses. Um, after all this, banks may ask for some personal information, such as your last login date or your pet's name. And we can see this usually when we, um, if you ever um, forgotten your password on, say, Gmail, and they ask you a security question that you set when you created the account, such as what is your mother's maiden name or 
Um, what was the, your first teacher's name? Something like that. Um, then the user must answer that in order to get their account. The same thing applies here. It's just extra security. And this, of course, um, is personal, so um, hackers shouldn't be able to answer it. Um, finally, the user will be sent to the website homepage. And it may be important to only use the links or buttons the bank provides to navigate through the site. Now, if you use, like, for example, if you input, um, like, up, like on, on the URL box, um, a page from on the bank's website, they might say, oh, error, you must log in again, because um, something's went wrong, and you can't do that. Also, if you press the forward or backwards arrow on your browser, that might also cause the same problem. So it's good that if you navigate through the bank's buttons, it's more secure. So we've been through all of that. Let's um, use our knowledge from security to answer a past paper question. So I got this from the 2015 May-June exam, um, I think from paper one, like as in, as in, yeah, yeah, pa yeah of, co of course, paper one, but like paper one, one, I think it was. Um, anyway. So an online bank requires a client to supply an eight-digit code each time they wish to a access their account on the bank's website. Rather than, asks, um, rather than ask the client to use a keyboard, they requested to use an on-screen keypad, shown on the right, to input the eight-digit eight -digit code. The position of the digits on the keypad can change each time the website is visited. The client uses a mouse or touchscreen to select each of the eight digits. So. Here's the thing. We, we have some information here, and we're meant to answer some questions here. So question one, explain why the bank has chosen to use this method of entering the eight digits. Now, if we go back, we can see that the client must um, use an on-screen keypad um, to input the code. And also, um, the positions of the keypad, on the keypad um, positions of the digits on the keypad change, and also, they're required to use a mouse or touch screen to select them. Now here's the um, answer to the question. So digits on the keypad are mixed up, which makes the combination more difficult to interpret. And also using a mouse or touch screen defeats spyware software, which um, picks up keyboard presses. So there's our answer. Question two, name and describe another, another one that the bank could in introduce to improve the security of their website. Now, if you remember what we just talked about just now, we could say, we could say a, a few things, more than a few things. We could say, have username input as well to um, help improve security. So the both must, they, both much, uh, they both must match in order for access to be granted. Now, we haven't looked at that in this video, but we looked at that in the authentication video. We looked at usernames as well. So that could be one of our answers. We can also have um, personal information questions, so like, what is your pet's name? And um, you can also like include other things, like like include like have firewalls, have um, some kind of security protocol. Um, it's quite like mark schemes tend to be quite open to these types of um, questions. So like you know you, you say quite a, quite a bit. So uh, yeah, that's it. So that's the end of security, and we're finally on to the last topic of theory. We're finally on to ethics. And we are finished with theory, um, and we can move on to paper two. So yeah.